Yo, and welcome to Shooting the Soil. Just decided to do this one out of the blue here because uh, we opened up our uh, little compost bin to go empty it outside and we saw some of this stuff. And here's the image. Yeah, that's what we saw. All sorts of furry stuff. So we just, we just had to grab a pinch with uh, tweezers, toss it on a slide because, uh, yeah, I really wanna know what that stuff looks like. All right, and here we are. This is the top part where I probably grabbed it with the tweezers and pinched it up. We are using the 10X, 10X objective right now. So we are at a 100X total magnification. And wowza. So we see all the hyphae going around through all this fuzz and here are the spores and did a little research and this would be a saprophyte which is a reducer breaking down you know and of course it being in my con compost it is uh, breaking down the food and reducing it and I believe this particular saprophyte or fungi, which is in the mold family, would be a rhizophus. Judging by its extra furriness and what I've seen online from the images that I've researched. But uh, definitely, if you got more insight, because there's many types of rhizophus, if you can uh, drop some it more insight that would be awesome in the comments but based on my research that's what I came up with it's in the mold family it's a fungi it's a saprophyte meaning that it's a reducer breaks things down and I believe the category that it falls into would be a rhizophus and then there's a bunch of different types of rise of us. But <laughs> that's the best I can do for you. Following the strand here. So we see it's not like a lot of the fungi that we see in the soil. How it kind of comes to these narrow points. But other than that, it's a very uniform but doesn't have the, uh, the septi, the, the segments in the, uh, in the cell walls that we like to see with our good beneficial um, soil microbes. And yeah, you don't want to eat this stuff. If this is growing on your food, like the, uh, the image here, yeah, nope, nope, uh, can be... Uh, a human pathogen not a fungi that we want but at the same time perfectly fine in our compost because it's going to uh, do a really good job at breaking down everything that's in our compost and making it more plant available So this is the sort of thing like a hot compost would probably kill off before it got near your plants. Or even a aerobic Jonathan Sioux, this stuff would probably be, be out-competed and long gone after the year-long decomposition. This stuff's going to run out of food and be out-competed by the other facultative aerobes. So the, by the time it's ready to go on your soil, this stuff probably isn't going to be all that prevalent. So one where, you know, the, these are the sort of strands with no segment that we don't really want to see when we're scoping our soil. I mean, a little bit on the surface would be okay, but if you saw these things everywhere, you might have a problem. This is actually growing on a spaghetti squash skin that uh, after I scooped out all that nice spaghetti squash and made a little spaghetti squash pasta dish, 
I tossed it in the compost bin and a couple days later this is what we got so yeah all right well this is probably gonna be a pretty short stream unless anybody has any questions or want to put any more insight on this rise of us fungi strand But this is what it looks like under the scope. So yeah, it's all about learning all the different organisms and all the different type of hyphae's and looking at as much as we can under the scope. So I want to do a lot of more, a bunch more stuff like this. Just you know, when we if we see that uh, that IMO that that looks a little a little less fuzzy and a little more spider webby I want to throw that under the scope and so we can just learn about what all this stuff looks like all right well mass has a great job what kind of chart book would you recommend for pictures of beneficial soil microbes well we we need more of that it's really tough um, there's a I'm trying to remember there's a couple of good books but they're expensive so I usually just go on, you know, Google Images and Google Scholar and do as much research and try to find images. But yeah, most of what you get on Wiki are, I mean, they're nowhere near this quality. They're, you know, it's like, how are these, you know, how do we not have better imagery of all this stuff with the technology out these days? It is lacking. And... Granted, there's not, it's really hard to identify species by just visual traits, but with the technology that we're getting, I think we could do much better than we're doing. We don't always have to rely on doing like DNA to figure out at least, at least, you know, we could get the family and the subfamily of what these things are pretty down by the quality of uh, microscopy that we have today you know this this is only at 100x and granted I have a nice full frame camera but it's only a $300 microscope really hope to upgrade to a better microscope soon as soon as I can afford it looking at the LW scientific and uh, that will allow us to do a whole bunch of other stuff but yeah, it's very, very interesting, and that's the whole reason why I started the channel, because we needed to see more of this stuff, so we could all learn together about it. All right, and well, before we wrap up the stream, um, we do have Dark Field at 100x, so let's see what this looks like in Dark Field. I'm really curious. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a good image here. All right, let's see what we can do. We're in manual mode. Oh, where's my mouse? There it is. So we got to bump up our ISO. Usually we go about there. And see. Oh, we got to also remove the shading. Make sure we're up to the top. Oh, there we go. Voila. Just a little tweak of the microscope. Now we are in dark field. So, you know these things are all living when you're in dark field by how much they kind of, see how all the edges, specifically right here, glow and kind of phosphoresce? And this is only dark field. This is only just making the light so it hits the sides instead of shining it through. So, once we get epifluorescence, we're going to be able to do a lot more. Here, watch this. I'll just, yeah, see? <laughs> I'm barely even moving that dark field filter and look look how much of a difference it made. We could actually go down in light, but wow, this looks cool. Pretty fascinating. Let's kind of zoom through the cluster. Yep. But it's funny when you hit them with the side light, they really start to glow. 
that's kind of a technique that you could tell that a you know fungal hyphae is dead or alive just by how much the uh, how much it phosphoresces as the uh, with the light. If it was dead, it would not glow as much. Would not have those rainbow colors. It's quite interesting. And then once I get the epifluorescence and start shining some some different spectrums down in there, that, that will really bring out the glow. But see how, how the light hits it at different angles. It's, glow, it's glowing a whole bunch over here to the right. And then as we kind of scroll through, the light hits it all different. Super interesting. So that's just one te technique that we can uh, tell if hyphies are alive or not. Alright, well yeah. Hope you all gained something by this. Checking out uh, saprophyte that's just growing in our compost bin in our kitchen because we uh, we slacked on uh, taking it outside a little bit and yeah we tossed it under the scope and all these little spores right here uh, from my knowledge put it in the rhizophus category so in the mold family but it's Still a fungal, fungal hyphae. That, uh, and its job is to, uh, you know, break down plant matter. Reduce it. And get it to the point where it's, uh, gonna advance our soils and feed our plants. And do that whole nutrient cycling. Uh, I want to call it magic, but let's get to the point where it's science. We're figuring it out. <laughs> we're almost there or we're there but we got a lot to learn let me just put it that way anyway um hope you enjoyed the stream uh hit those buttons if you would be so kind and uh yeah happy growing and we'll catch you on the flip side